all carpetbagger here coming to you live from the south more specifically louisville kentucky you guys voted to send me to louisville kentucky here on day number two of the choose my adventure road trips the poll for the next city is still open you can choose between nashville tennessee paducah kentucky or springfield illinois but today we are in louisville kentucky and it's a little bit rainy today we got a little sprinkle in the air but uh, more specifically we are here in front of the colonel sanders museum we're actually right next door to the kfc corporate offices here in louisville kentucky and uh, they have this this grand museum here dedicated to colonel sanders and honestly i don't know a whole lot about this museum i try to do a little bit of research the, the the research online is actually pretty sparse when you look up colonel sanders museum most the the website results send you to um to the uh harlan sanders cafe museum in corbin kentucky that's the original kfc over in corbin but they have an additional museum to colonel sanders being one of the largest american icons being one of the largest southern icons mr colonel sanders the founder of kfc they have a dedicated museum to him here that we're going to check out so please follow me so we got some raindrops there on the camera so you look at that grand building there out here in front we actually have a bust of the man in question colonel harlan sanders now i have a question this is this is a debate that uh, me and jen um had when we first when we first started dating and um, i was surprised that she did not know colonel sanders first name I kept referring to him as Colonel Harlan Sanders, and she said that she had, did not know his name until she met me. So I want to know. Just, just let me know. Kind of an informal poll. Is that is that household knowledge? Is that uh, common knowledge that his first name is Harlan? If you knew his name was Harlan, or if you didn't know his name was Harlan, leave a comment in the comment section. Yeah, there was no like large sign or anything inviting us in to the museum. But I do see a very small sign that says Colonel Harlan Sanders Museum Entry right ahead. So let's head through this door and hopefully that will let us into the Colonel Sanders Museum. Huh? There we go. All right, we're here in the Yum corporate offices and over here is the Colonel Sanders Museum in this room. And look who is here to greet us, the Colonel himself. Well, oh. my name is Colonel He's animatronic. and this museum is all about my life. I was born in Henryville, Indiana, not too far. Born in Indiana? When I was 10, I learned an important lesson about hard work. Truth be told, it was a tongue lashing from my mother I shall never forget. I made a resolution then that I would never let anything interfere with me doing the best jobs possible. And that lesson is probably why Kentucky Fried Chicken came to be. So come He's on, got his bucket of chicken. make yourself at home. Over there to your right is where it all begins. All right, that's pretty amazing. The animatronic Colonel Sanders greeting us to the museum standing in front of that giant bucket of chicken. My name oh. is Colonel Harlan Sanders. Starting up this again. This museum is all about my life, don't you see? All right, so the animatronic Colonel Sanders told us to start over this end of the museum. You see the Colonel Sanders clock there. It says that it is seconds marked on it so that chicken can be cooked precisely by uh, this clock. Also have this. Uh, this is like a a lantern or light shaped like a uh, KFC bucket. Some uh, Colonel Sanders KFC glasses and the uh, Colonel Sanders mug there. 
Colonel Sanders, of course, the author of books such as Finger Lickin' Good and It Wasn't All Gravy. Up here on uh, the ceiling, you have kind of a timeline of the life of Colonel Sanders, some of his family photos there. There is a bronze bust of Colonel Sanders. This was actually uh, sculpted by his daughter, Margaret. There is Colonel Sanders re receiving his colonelship. Becoming a Kentucky colonel is the highest honor you can receive as a civilian in, uh, in Kentucky. And um, a lot of people, most famous people from Kentucky are given the, uh, the title of Kentucky colonel. But uh, Colonel Sanders uh, turned it into his whole, uh, his whole gimmick. And I mentioned the other museum, and this is the one that comes up in, in, in much more in search results, is uh, the original uh, Alexander's Cafe. That's in Corbin, Kentucky, not too far, a few hours from here. That's still there. You can still, uh, still visit. They have a new modern museum inside that one as well. It's a rare picture of Harlan Sanders pre-Colonel gimmick. Some pictures of Colonel Sanders when he was a... Uh, a bona fide celebrity. See him uh, traveling around the country, making appearances. This right here, this is a Colonel Sanders weather vane. Or if that maybe be on top of a KFC restaurant. Now here we have a true relic, a true holy grail of uh, fast food here. This is Colonel Sanders original pressure cooker. This is where he literally invented the process of making Kentucky Fried Chicken. He, it says here that, uh, that it took 30 minutes to cook fried chicken in a skillet. He said that was way too long and uh, said that he had uh, a pressure cooker that he used to cook green beans and he experimented with cooking chicken in the pressure cooker and was able to cook it much faster. And, uh, you know, that's how a method to cook chicken that's, you know, not used by just KFC, but used by, um, by other people as well. It's pretty much the advent of fast food fried chicken, the uh, pressure cooker there. But, wow, that is, yeah, that's a priceless artifact, the, uh, the pressure cooker in which uh, KFC was first cooked. We have some Colonel Sanders artwork in here. There's Colonel Sanders beat art. In a sketch there, it says that people would send him gifts and uh, crafts. There's a custom-made bow tie there. And there's a campaign button, 1951, where he ran for uh, state senator. Down here we have Colonel Sanders' walking cane, as well as his iconic white suit, his colonel suit. And this is actually the, uh, the dress that his wife, uh, Claudia, Sanders would wear kind of an antebellum style uh, dress there to match his colonel outfit. You can see the hand painted portrait of Colonel Sanders there. And look who the artist is. This is an original Norman Rockwell. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Some of the awards received by uh, Colonel Sanders over the years, including this. Uh, golden pressure cooker that was uh, awarded to uh, Colonel Sanders it says on uh, September 7 1977 was given to Colonel Sanders on his 87th birthday so we have the original pressure cooker and then a uh, newfangled golden pressure cooker gifted to Colonel Sanders here's the ballad of Colonel Sanders by Bill Henson I may have to look up that uh, that later and see if I can find that song online. Here we have uh, Colonel Sanders' original desk from his office. See the fiberglass Colonel Sanders back here. Let's just try your hand on unlocking the secret recipe. I guess uh, locked up in this Fort Knox safe here. You have to be an expert safe cracker to try to get in here. I guess the 11, uh, figure out what the 11 secret herbs and spices are. So there's only a couple people know uh, 
what they are, and they've all signed uh, confidenti confidentiality agreements. And uh, I, know I guess you have to be an expert safe cracker to get in here. I'm not very good at cracking safes. And you know, they probably don't actually have the recipe in here. Here's some kernelisms. You take this old timey phone and listen to Colonel Sanders' voice. Any aware of. Our chips never hurt anybody. They just prepare you for something better. If a man gives up, he's dead. A man can do every bit as much as he thinks he can and all that he wants to do. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's just different kinds of weather. On a rainy day, just remember that some farmer is happy to have that rain. Looks like Colonel Sanders was a Shriner. See his emblazoned, uh, emblazoned Shriner hat there. He has the keys to the city of both Akron, Ohio and Omaha, Nebraska. And you can see the giant bucket there. I think we can actually walk around back here and enter the bucket. Uh, you can watch Colonel Sanders commercials. You have some uh, artifacts in here. There's uh, some matches. There's some Colonel Sanders honey in that packet. Some wet naps here. And uh, oh, look at that. There is a a, uh, a box of mashed potatoes. Apparently the mashed potatoes come in a little deck of cards sized box. Got some kernel bucks there. And uh, so we got a picture of a uh, prairie dog drinking a, a KFC soda. Sanders, and this museum is all about my life, don't you see? I was born in Henryville, Indiana, not too far from here. When I was 10, I learned an important lesson about hard work. Truth be told, it was a tongue lashing from my mother I shall never forget. So a smaller museum dedicated to Colonel Sanders, but I say that animatronic, uh, animatronic Colonel makes, makes it 100% uh, worthwhile. Rain starting to come down pretty hard here in Louisville. Because of the rain, I think it's best that we do stick to indoor activities uh, today. So I figure we check out another museum. And so I've come over here to Churchill Down the home of the Kentucky Derby and uh, the location of the Kentucky Derby Museum. Of course, uh, Churchill Downs is a racetrack for horses where they have the, the horse race known as the Kentucky Derby every year. And um, I don't know a lot about horse racing, I'll admit that. Um, I did travel to the Kentucky Horse Park in last year's Choose My Adventure road trip over in Lexington and we met Funny Side, the winner of uh, one of the uh, Kentucky Derbies. So and I've always thought about maybe going to the Kentucky Derby just for the spectacle of it all. But uh, today we'll be checking out the Kentucky Derby Museum. Of course there is a statue of a horse athlete, Barbaro, out here in front. And uh, I guess we gotta look for the entrance to the Kentucky Derby Museum. Gotta get out of the rain. It says, uh, this sign here says the Kentucky Derby Museum entrance is this way. But um, there appears to be a giant gate blocking, uh, blocking the way. So where's the, where's the entrance to the museum? Maybe, maybe over here. Let's try over here. All right, here we go. We enter through here. Looks like that's some for, form of a of horse gate, like a mobile horse gate. It's got like tires on it. But anyways, this is how we enter uh, the museum. Okay, so I actually showed up in time for a uh, guided tour of the racetrack. So that's pretty exciting. All right, there is a film that will be playing in this room. Okay, it looks like a wrap around theater. This is interesting. 
Wow. So we sit on these uh, bar stools here. Okay, so the bar stool here rotates. That makes sense. See, they spin so that you can get the uh, 360 view here. You just twirl around to watch the screen. view here. The racetrack. Alright, now that the film is over, our guide is supposed to be here momentarily to give us a tour of the racetrack. Alright. This is whoa. Derby has been run every year. The first derby we had about 10,000 people in attendance. These days, it's usually between 160 and 170,000. Wow. Our worst time of the year because we don't have any horses here right now. January and February are the only two months when there aren't horses and humans living on this property. Oh, wow. Look at that. Where you're focusing down there is the finish line. That white the finish line? Gold ball. Okay, yeah, right Once there. around from there, the finish it's a mile. Line. One mile around. The Derby, that's a longer race than that. It's a mile and a quarter. So the Derby starts at that red and white pole. And they're going to go left to right past us. And then there's one more lap that completes what we call the greatest two minutes in sports. So it's only two minutes long? Yeah. Oh, wow. Is, yeah. Greatest two minutes in sports. And well, Secretariat holds the record. He ran it in a minute 59 and two fifths. Uh, typically, it's a couple seconds over two minutes. So greatest two minutes in sports. We have two racetracks here. The one closest to us, it's mostly sand. That's what they're going to run the derby on. But we have a grass track inside of that. Some horses okay. have a preference. They're better on grass than they are on dirt, vice versa. Yes, see the grass track the derby on the derby is always there. going to be run on the track closest to us. So I had an excellent guided tour uh, out on the track. I got some great information. I really loved uh, Loved the tour. The tour guide was amazing and uh, gave me a crash course on you know, the culture, the history, and kind of the inner workings of horse racing and um, and the Kentucky Derby, which apparently is a giant Mardi Gras-esque party that, that occurs here every spring. So I kind of wanted to make it a goal. I think I, de I think I definitely want to come to the Kentucky Derby and just kind of observe the uh, the spectacle of it all. You can see some of the traditions of the. Uh, Kentucky Derby, some of the strange outfits worn uh, by people while attending the uh, the Kentucky Derby. This is a giant rose hat, and uh, look at this. This is a pith helmet worn by Ernest Trent. You can see the uh, the horse there, and for some reason he has Beavis from Beavis and Butthead up there on the top. Over here is a replica of Queen Elizabeth II's hat from when she attended the uh, Kentucky Derby in 2007. Of course, what uh, encompasses Kentucky more than horses and bourbon? You see these are bourbon bottles shaped like uh, Kentucky Derby winners. There's Secretariat and Cannonade there. And look at this, this is a periscope, a Kentucky Derby periscope used to uh, watch the race. Statues of some of the winners. They have the, the most interesting names. There's Flying Ebony, Bubbling Over, and Whiskery. Is that like whiskey but with whiskers? Over top the museum, you have uh, the Garland of Roses which is the cape made of roses they put on the winning horse of the Kentucky Derby. As we can see it on Mage here, Mage is the winner of the uh, 2023 Kentucky Derby, the most, uh, most recent Kentucky Derby. You can see right here in the winner's circle, adorned with those roses. Back here we have, uh, that's Mage's halter worn on the horse's face and then some of mage's horseshoes used to uh to win the derby still got the derby dirt 
in the horseshoes. Talks about black heritage in racing. Talks about how in the, the early days of horse racing that it was often the uh, both free and enslaved black people that would, uh, that would train the horses to a lot of the work, work as, uh, as jockeys. But it says uh, that, you know, because of racism and segregation that a lot of them were just pushed out of the uh, horse racing uh, industry. This is Isaac Murphy's gravestone. Now, Isaac Murphy was a jockey, an African-American jockey, that won the Kentucky Derby three times. But despite that, he was buried in an unmarked grave. But he was uh, tracked down, disinterred, and he's now buried at the Kentucky Horse Park, which we saw in Lexington last year. And here is his original gravestone in the Kentucky Derby Museum. Some of the musical artists that played at the Kentucky Derby. It's Guns and Roses and the... Uh, the Rolling Stones, and here is the outfit that Cindy Lauper wore to the Kentucky Derby. We see exhibits dedicated to the uh, the horses themselves, the American Pharaoh, some of his uh, racing gear here, some of the horseshoes. Now apparently there's some sort of gambling component to horse racing. It says that we can uh, place our bets here. Let's see. Um, place your bets. Touch a scribble below and arrow to place a bet. Let's put everything on. Why not take a chance? Odds 65 to 1. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at these other. Yeah, I like the name the best. Oh, wait a minute. What about Drew's Galetalige? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Drew's Galetalige. I'd say he's going to win. Going to win everything. There we go. So we'll put everything on Drew's Galetalige. Get the ticket. Race begins in one minute and 11 seconds. Okay, everything on Drew's Galetalige. And I guess, uh, oh, okay. Over here is where we, uh, we watch the race. I may not be very good at horse betting because I bet that the horse would simultaneously get uh, first and second and uh, and third place all at once. All right, here's our race. Come on, Drew's Galetta Leash. Come on, come on. I bet everything on you. Where's my horse? It's confusing when the horses have names that are like whole sentences. It sounds like a madman rambling. Drew's got legal. Drew's got legal is my name of my horse, and it's in last place. No, no. Touche won. All right, I was hoping we actually get to ride a horse. Here is the uh, the jockey simulators here. Press this button here to, to whip your horse. Whip, whip, whip. Keep whipping. Keep whipping. Oh, oh, tells me to keep standing up. I guess you're not supposed to relax. So you gotta actually choose what type of horse you wanna be, a front runner a stalker or a closer. I want my <laughs> I want my horse to be a stalker. Every breath you take, every move you make. All right, see, so you, you got the, the warm up here. You use this button to to whip your horse. Whip, 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 whip. This button moves you to the sides. Oh, oh, that was just a practice. Here we're leaving those gates there. And uh, wanna, wanna lay on that whip pretty hard. Keep the horse running, you can see. You can see uh, actually running around Churchill Downs. We got a tour of these grounds. Now we can race on them. 
Oh my gosh, these horses are trying to run me off the track here. Can you like, in, is the jockey allowed to like try to kick the other jockeys off? That would be, uh, are, they, are you allowed to, you can whip your horse, can you whip the other jockeys? That's what I want to know. Can I use my whip? Try to whip the other jockeys off their horses. Oh man, come on. Come on, come on. Am I in first? I'm in third, dang it. I finished fifth. Oh man, now I'll never get any money for my horse, uh, my horse studying. It's a different race known as Kentucky Oaks. And instead of the uh, Garland of Roses, they get a Garland of Lilies. And then the winner also gets uh, 12 mint julep uh, cups that they can, they can drink mint juleps out of. Here it talks about the festivities around the Kentucky Derby. Here's the queen of the Kentucky Derby's outfit. And then this is a dress made out of medals, one for horse racing. See the ribbons there, making up the dress and the medals up there at the top. Yeah, I see the very interesting uh, outfits there. The, uh, the rose suit. Here's the Kentucky Derby styles from the pandemic. That ma matching face mask to match your flower hat. It's a very old US flag here. It says when they were doing repairs on uh, the steeples here, the uh, Twin Spires in 2002, they found this flag inside. It says it's dating back between 1905 and uh, 1914 come up here to the second floor you can actually look down over the uh, theater that we were in earlier the uh, screen wraps around the balcony here exhibit here on secretariat as a physical specimen apparently secretariat the peak the peak of horse genetics see the young secretariat there hoping that someday he grows up to be the greatest racehorse in the world. Some screen used costumes from the movie Secretariat. And here is a giant replica of Secretariat's horseshoe. It says that this was at one point the world's largest horseshoe, but only one year later it lost the distinction to a giant horseshoe in Mumbai, India. But for at least one glorious year, this was the world's largest horseshoe, based after the horseshoe of Secretariat. You can see the little smaller versions of the Secretariat horseshoe there. Secretariat whiskey decanter with some Secretariat brand whiskey. There's a uh, Secretariat action figure, and there's a Secretariat's basketball jersey. Apparently, not only did he uh, compete as a racehorse, he also uh, also liked to shoot some hoops. And here they're playing a movie about the building of Churchill Downs and the evolution of Churchill Downs over the years. They also have the uh, CEO's uh, hard hat there. Apparently he liked to drink two beers out of his uh, helmet uh, while he was working. It's an exhibit dedicated to the jockey. See some of the uh, tools of the trade here, the jockey uniforms, the saddle. There's a scale used to weigh in for uh, for the jockeys. Jockeys traditionally very small people because uh, you know I guess the lighter you are on the horse's back, the better it is for racing. The uh, looks like the cutoff there is uh, 126 pounds. That is the weight limit. So let's see if I can uh, be a jockey. Let's see where are we at. Oh, I'm at. Uh, what is that about? About 215. About 215. So a little, a uh, little big for a for a jockey. Almost, uh, almost twice the size of a 
up a good jockey. Oh, and here's some jockey gear. We need to get uh, get dressed up to uh, to be able to ride a horse properly. Let's get some uh, some jockey gear on here. Here's the jockey hat. Ooh, I don't know if I can get this coat on. Maybe, let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, we gotta put the, the jockey goggles on. Okay, gotta put these on before the hat. All right. And there we go. I am a man ready to ride a horse. Here's life on the backside. Now the tour guide said that um, while there are horses back there, there are people that live on the track full time just to take care of the horses because horses need a lot of taking care of. Got all these items used for, for grooming a horse. Yeah, these horses are, uh, are better groomed than I am. And uh, oh yeah, the, the feet of a horse, the, the feet of the horse are the most important part of the horse, so that needs to be uh, taken care of. You need all these tools to keep the horse's feet nice and good and keep the, the horseshoes on them. And here's the uh, veterinarian objects. Oh man, look at that horse syringe. I would hate to be injected uh, with that horse syringe there. Oh, just imagine trying to swallow one of those horse pills. This looks like the gates that we entered to first come into. The museum it says this is the first electric horse gate used in the Kentucky Derby. Oh look at that. It was a horse. And here inside the Kentucky Derby Museum we have the International Horseshoeing Hall of Fame. So the names of some of the great horseshoers in here. There it is uh, John Criz, Joe Criz. Wonder uh Wonder if they're uh, related. They're both from Bethany, Connecticut, so I would think so. Different horseshoes in here. It's very interesting horseshoes. I've only ever seen like the standard horseshoe. These have some uh, really cool embellishments on them. Um, I wonder if that one's just decorative because it's got like a rose on it. Feels like that would be hard to, for the horse to walk around with a rose on the bottom of uh, of its foot. Like this one has like a trap door. Over here you can see Churchill Downs from a jockey's perspective. Step here into this area. You have the 360 view. You can look up and wave at the people in the stands. This is famous jockey Bill Shoemaker. And uh, here's a painting of him by Andy Warhol. So apparently uh, Shoemaker also went by the name The Shoe. Kind of how uh, Rocky Maivia went by the rock. So you can actually watch the 360 movie from up here on the balcony. It's really cool. This elevator is so big you could probably put a horse in here. It is time to exit through the gift shop. Get yourself a uh, horse to take home with you. Got the uh, plushy horses down there. You have both Louisville-opoly and horse-opoly. And of course, this is Kentucky, so you can take home a uh, bottle of bourbon from the Horse Museum. Some keychains. You get your own little bobbly horse there. Postcards here with a recipe for mint juleps. And also these, these are pretty cool, these postcards with uh, famous jockeys on them. Have a snow globe here. I was hoping they had a snow globe with a horse in it. By a bejeweled horseshoe there, or get your own uh, crazy Kentucky Derby hat. Oh, and who's this? Little Sebastian? 
in the Derby Cafe, also known as Ikea. And oh boy, it is super rainy out here. You know, if you guys do want to vote to send me somewhere sunny and warm, that would definitely be an option. But uh, thank you for joining me here today at a rainy day in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, even though it's rainy, we still had some fun indoors. And that's, you know, one of the things I do like to do in the winter months when a lot of the outdoor attractions are closed. I love to check out some of the museums. I love a good uh, a good museum. And I love this museum, the uh, Kentucky Derby Museum. And one, one sign of a good museum is when you leave knowing more than when you went in. And I learned quite a bit about the Kentucky Derby, about the tradition surrounding it, about horse racing. And I do think one of these years I definitely want to make it out to the Kentucky Derby itself. The, the, the gentleman said the, the horse race only lasts two minutes, but apparently it is a 12 hour party akin to Mardi Gras. So definitely want to check that out sometime. I think that would be very interesting. But uh, tomorrow I'm going home, back to the hotel now. I'm going to get this video edited maybe get a little bit of relaxation in and try to get to sleep. And uh, tomorrow morning I will wake up and I will go to whatever city you guys voted for, whether it be Springfield, Illinois, Nashville, Tennessee, or Paducah, Kentucky, and I will head to that city. I will spend a day in that city and then we will repeat this process of you guys voting on which city I will uh, travel to next. Of course, you know, given that, that nothing bad happens. I am still trying to, uh, as we speak, trying to uh, coordinate with Jen to try to find a way to, uh, to get my medication to me, but hopefully that will be uh, resolved. And uh, of course, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe. It'll help this channel out. Also will help you be able to vote. Um, you know, if you subscribe to the channel, click on your subscription feed. The, uh, the polls for the next cities will pop up in that, in that subscription feed. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel other ways, consider, uh, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, and I'm currently doing cameos from the road. If you'd like a personalized message from me, all the information for all those things is in the description, and all those things help keep this horse on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow, my friends. This one's in the bag.